This is Baz. He's an AI agent that I'm training to beat this level. But right now he's making some bad life choices. It doesn't look that hard though, right? But if he jumps here, dead. He hits this, dead. He runs into this, that's right. No, but if, if he goes too far, dead. Here's the thing though, I'm not gonna let Bazza visually see the game. He's gonna have to do it all based purely on his senses. Now this game I've been building is all in Godot, and by building, I mean Falcon Bracky's tutorial. My plan is to train it using a library called Stable Baselines 3. SB3 is all written in a programming language called Python. So how do I get them to talk? After a bit of research, I actually found this, Godot IRL. It solves this problem by allowing Godot games to speak through to SB3. It's actually got really good examples and there's solid documentation. If I run it on a sample, It's almost too easy. So, will this work for Baz? <sighs> Look, I know I said there was great documentation, but I'll be completely honest. I didn't read it. And that's my first problem. I've got this deep-seated tendency to try to move so fast and sometimes I'm, I miss stuff or I just go completely off the reservation and miss the mark completely. So it turns out there's a lot of stuff happening under the hood and this game's gonna need a few changes. I kind of narrowed it down to four key goals right now though. Right now, Baz only operates on user feedback, but I need to hook him up to the agent. Good IRL actually comes packaged with this AI controller node. I just need to add it to Baz. This is the bit I've actually been struggling with the most. Now you can see that there's a game, yeah? Right, we can see it. But right now, the agent behind Baz can't. This is where the sensors come in. See my wordplay there? Sensors? Sensors? Yeah, yeah. Godot IRL has a range of sensors, including this one. A Raycar sensor which detects collisions with obstacles. I'm also adding in this position sensor, so this is going to give Baz the position of whatever objects I add here. I'll also bang out a bit of code to wire this all up. Now, Baz like me likes a cheeky reward after a hard day's work. But right now he doesn't have a point system to get him to go to the flagpole. Basically, I need a way to seduce him there. To do this, we need to give him some little treats to entice him towards the flagpole. I'm gonna chuck him a couple of points each time he hits a new best distance to the pole. So he'll get points if he goes closer, but none if he goes back. 200 points if he lands on the platform. He also gets a point if he gets a coin, loses 200 points if he dies, and a thousand points if he hits the pole. Last thing, easy one, I just need to add in a sync node. This opens up a local server which table baselines can communicate with. And I've written up a quick training script in Python. This creates a connection to Godot and allows the algorithm to actually train them on that game. Now, if I kick it off, Okay, so I know I said that I need to slow down, but if I let Baz train at this speed, we're gonna be here absolutely forever. Right now I'm only getting this many FPS. So I've come up with three absolutely genius ideas. One, I can turn up the speed inside the game. Uh... <laughs> Two, I can export the game and tweak my training script to run parallel environments. which gives us this SPS. And three, I noticed my NCEPT hyperparameter was a little bit too big, which means that we're gonna be collecting a lot of information before we actually make an update to the algorithm, which is gonna slow stuff down. So dropping this closer to the average game length is gonna make us train a little bit faster. And now, we are running way faster. Okay, so he's not hitting the platform, but he's learning. All right, so you saw that it said I've been hit. That doesn't mean he's hit the flag, it means he's died. I don't know, but I've also written so print flag or print flag hit plus the score. But uh, it's looking few and far between. So, Baz is running fast. But we've got a problem again. The moving platform of death. No matter what I've tried, the agent just keeps making dumb decisions. This led to my second internal dilemma. During this, I've been putting in like some insane hours. In, in fact, I think I hit my personal Pomodoro goal. But when I'm getting tired, I tend to throw my coding problems at Claude, which was just screwing them up even worse. So, to be fair, I am throwing it like absolutely crap prompts and not even reading what it's giving me back at this point. I'm literally just straight control C, control V into my game environment. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna double back and dial down the difficulty on the game. So instead of having one mega long 
moving platform. I'm gonna give him two static ones and then remove the enemies. Then hopefully I can take what he's learnt from the easier games and transfer that into a harder game. Now, also, Claude suggested frame stacking so the agent could learn movement. This sucked for a whole host of other reasons, which you can have a whole nother debate, but Whatever. The only risk here is that like Baz memorizes the stuff from this level and when I try to transition it to the next level, I've wasted days training. So this looked like it was going really well. So well, but take a look at this. Baz really likes those platforms. So much so that he's like, meh, screw it, I'm not gonna finish the game. You know when you try to code for all the edge cases? Yeah, this, this just wasn't on the list. Now, an experienced engineer would methodically work through this, breaking down each problem. So I did the opposite, trying a ton of random hyperparameter options at the same time, so we had no clear indication as to what was working, adding Claude's crap suggestions back in, even letting it train for 10 million steps, which takes roughly five hours with the parallel environments. I can't really explain my thinking here. If it hasn't worked, like do more of it. Like, I don't know. It's kind of weird. The flagpole gives a thousand points and I get it. It's a sparse reward, meaning it comes like right at the end instead of being like a frequent reward. So it doesn't really feed the agent progressively, but it's still nuts that it's just smashing the platform. Probably best to call it a, a night at this point. Literally, as I'm going to bed. So if I disable the agent, right? Take a look at this. If I walk through the game and hit a platform, 200 points, no issues. But if I jump on it again, I get another 200. Baz can literally get a million points just by hammering and banging on that platform. So it's not any of the other stuff, it's just an issue with the reward. This is like one of my biggest takeaways from building custom environments for reinforcement learning triple check the reward. All I have to do is add in a flag so that Baz can only get the reward once. Oh, flag hit, that means he's hit it. Take a look, we're getting more flags hit, he's learning. Oh my god, dude, look how good this is. And it died. Not perfect, but it's definitely a lot better than what it was. It's the flag. Alright, finally, Baz is winning. But the platform of death awaits. So, rather than training from scratch, I'm going to take the pre-trained weights from here so that I'm starting from a better base. But this time I'm gonna export the game with our one long moving platform, i.e. the platform of death. Fingers crossed though, I've ironed out most of the bugs. He's stuck. It's moments like these that I kick my feet up, make a nice cup of tea, and talk crap to Claude. But I decided on a better path. I'm an idiot. I saw it 20 minutes into the run. When you start a run on Apple Watch, you get a timer, right? Time, it's all to do with time. Right now, if Baz gets stuck, there's nothing to end the game. So he just stays stuck forever. This actually stops the agent from learning anything new because it's not getting any new frames. It's literally Baz just hammering on that same position. So what if I added a time limit wrapper to each game? So if Baz does get stuck, after 60 seconds, it just force resets the game. So this is attempting to kick off Baz after training him with the time limit adjusted pipeline and after roughly 10 million steps of training. But the big question remains, will he get past the moving platform of death? Well, take a look. He's learned to jump consistently and hit the platform to cross the gap. And I think I'm a little relieved. Oh my God, finally. Honestly, kind of insane, but I don't just want to stop here. A little bit of foreshadowing. And also, if you're enjoying this video, drop us a like or leave a comment. It'd mean the absolute world to me. This has been an absolute labor of love. That being said, we didn't come this far just to come this far.
Yeah, I got it working. I never thought I would be so happy to see a little cartoon character hop across a bridge, but there you go. What I'm learning is that reinforcement learning is part science and part art form. You know the thing that kills me is most of these papers and tutorials are perfect examples, which means you've got no idea what to do when stuff goes to hell, but now that we've got it sorted, what if we got Baz to learn my beast level? I started this project on the 18th of August and it's been like, what, six weeks now getting to this point, but I've learned a ton. Namely, you just gotta take a breath when it's not going quite so well and to stop giving problems to my LLMs when I can't be bothered thinking. Even though I wanna go fast, sometimes slowing down just a little makes all the difference.